Hey, I'm Josh from Brown Dog Welding, and today we're gonna make a vase slash planter, depending on how you wanna use it. Uh, we have some stainless steel here. I'm gonna be using mild steel and copper as well. We're gonna use stainless steel filler, we're gonna use mild steel filler, and we're gonna use silicon bronze so we can join to similar metals. And now we're gonna get started. Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. So the first step is we're gonna lay out a measure and cut the material. I have the stainless steel right here. I have it laid out in the shape that I want and the dimensions that I want. Today I'm gonna to use my Metabo angle grinder. I've got a special thin one mil uh, disc from Weiler that cuts stainless amazing. There's no vibration, it's just nice and clean. Uh, you can do this with a bandsaw if you have the proper blades, if you have a bandsaw that can run at the proper speeds. You can do it with your plasma cutter. Uh, there'll be a little bit more cleanup. This is just gonna be a nice clean cut and really anybody with an angle grinder can do it. Really simple. So now we've prepped the, the sides of the materials. We've got nice clean edges for the welds. Uh, what I want to do now is set the corner height. So I'm going I'm to do a corner joint weld. It's going to look, you know, you're going to have your typical, typical corner, but I like it to overlap just a little bit to protect the backside of the weld, to protect the, the atmosphere from contaminating it too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, so this is like 532nd, I'm going to use a piece of what's about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to have, uh, in the end, I'm going to have a, about a sixteenth of overlap to protect the back side of the weld. I'm going to use my quick clamp and use the eighth of an inch piece to set the height, clamp it up, and then my machine is square is going to keep it 90. Now I'm going to put that there and I'll have my height with a little bit of overlap and I'm going to tack it in place now and continue for the other three sides. All right, so I've got these end pieces on. I've got them squared up. Um, it's tacked in, so they're easy to move. That's one of the reasons you do tack welds and not firm welds, is so you have some room for adjustment. Now I'm gonna take the stain, stainless pieces. I'll just put it right on top like that. I've got my little edge on this, on this side to weld on, and I will tack it up from there. So I wire wheeled the outside of this. I had already cleaned the inside edges. Uh, really, if you're gonna put something together and you want it to maintain the seal, you wanna clean every edge that's gonna be part of the heat affected zone because if it's in the heat affected zone, there's a chance that it could pull whatever contaminants are in that into the back of the weld. Uh, using mild steel, it's not usually too big of a deal. Stainless, it can be an aluminum, it definitely is. So just something to look out for. All right, so first I'm gonna weld around the bottom seam all the way around. Uh, I know I tacked it in the corners. I like doing that just to help keeping things square. A lot of times you'll hear people say, don't start or stop a weld in the corner. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna wrap around and do a short little weld like that. So my stop and starts, I go over the tack and then my stop is right here and my starts outside of that area to uh, kind of help minimize leak possibilities. And I'm super shaky, so that's why I have this steel stacked up here is as a hand rest. I just use whatever I have laying around and stack stuff up. Uh, basically, it helps with my stability, helps with the stability of the art. I have the bottom uh, kind of area welded up all with stainless. Now I'm going to use silicon bronze and I'm going to TIG braze all the vertical seams. So when I start the weld at the base, I'm going to take the puddle and I'm going to bring it back a little bit past where this weld ends so that we assure ourselves that there's no cold spots in the seam and you won't leak everywhere. All right, so I got the main body done and I have some one inch strips of copper that I'm gonna join. I'm gonna braze with silicon bronze to the base metals, which are stainless and mild steel. Uh, so I'm just gonna tack them right now and then either 
full weld the joints and sand it down or leave it. I'm not sure yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, so I have my copper strips tacked to the stainless and the mild, and now I'm gonna go through and braze them all with silicon bronze. We got the base completed. I got the copper strips brazed on with silicon bronze rod to the mild steel and to the stainless steel. There's not a lot of contrast in the color right now, but there will be because the mild steel untreated will uh, patina, will change color, will change texture. Uh, you could even treat it with some things to, to make it pop. So you'll get that contrast. The copper is going to weather, so that'll, that'll look super cool. Uh, especially as you know you use water dirt or whatever in it it's gonna just take on a life of its own it's kind of a living breathing thing uh, I added a little TIG bead around the tip of it just to kind of give it a, a different look to check out more of my work go to browndogwelding.com where you find my art sculptures and writing uh, you find me at Instagram at welder assassin and you can check out more projects like these that you can tackle uh, in the uh, What's in Your Weekend series at MillerWelds.com.